Nigeria's labor unions call for an indefinite strike action over cost of leaving. And Nigeria is ranked sixth in the world for organized crime. And this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anniko. The Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria have resolved to ground activities nationwide from October 3, 2023, following what the Labour Unions tagged as a failure of government to successfully implement policies to elevate the sufferings of Nigerians following a removal of subsidy on premium motor spirit. The NLC and the TUC are asking for wage awards, implementation of palliatives, tax exemptions, allowances to public sector workers, and a review of the minimum wage. The NLC had previously issued a 21-day ultimatum, which ended last week with complaints that none of the demands put before the federal government had been addressed. And so the unions have called for a strike, which will begin on October 3. And joining us to discuss this is Digbo Layoku. He is the National Secretary of the New Nigeria People's Party. Also joining us is Francis Chilaka. He is a political analyst and a social commentator. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Good evening, Miriam. Thank you. Great. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Layoku. You have been a journalist for a long time, and you've obviously worked as um, someone um, in the public sector um, before you decided to go private. Um, many people have said that um, labor going on this strike may not necessarily force the hand of government. Labor, in fact, there are people who even are querying whether labor will go on with this strike because... They have severally said they were going to go on a strike and then they changed their mind. Um, so should Nigerians really be holding their breath um, for this strike? All right, let me um, direct the question to you, Francis, while we try to get uh, Mr. Diko Olayoko back. Well, 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 um, yes, it's, it's, it's long overdue, but I'll tell you that uh, it's a necessity um, in the sense that... Um, uh, this government has not carried the labor along in everything it's doing. And if you noticed, if you have observed, labor has been coming out to tell Nigerians the outcome of the process of the meetings they've been holding. And, you know, the steps they are taking to be able to get government to do something. Because, you know, nothing seems to be working. Nothing seems to be going in the right direction that it should go. So I think that, yes, and I, I am in support of labor going on strike because I think in, you know, that's the only language that government across the world understands, you know, to be able to um, listen to the people and also take steps to add value to the lives of the people. Um, the, the issue here is a trust deficit also. We see that Nigerians... Um, have not necessarily trusted labor um, over the years. Many have blamed labor for being selfish, um, labor leaders uh, generally. Many have said they've become very political and not necessarily fighting for the people. What are your thoughts? Um, well, what has played out over time where, um, you see, when, when labor leaders begin to get involved in politics, it's expected that interest will be involved and it's expected that in the, in the cost of that interest, they end up betraying the people they should all actually be protecting. So over time, we've seen labor leaders getting so much involved in politics, even contesting for elections. And, you know, um, each time people expect that labor should come out and be able to um, tell governments, you know, tell truth to power, we, we found that uh, there has been compromises here and there. That is why Nigerians are not really, really uh, moved. Nigerians are not really, really uh, happy. But, you know, I think that uh, we seem to be having a labor that has, uh, they're not only backing, but uh, they seem to have what it takes to, to buy it. Uh, let me come back to you, Mr. Layaku. Um, the same question that I asked um, Francis Chilaka. For someone who's worked in the public sector, now in the private sector, and then, of course, for someone who's experiencing the downturn that our economy is facing, what effect will this strike action by labor, um, you know, 
what effect will it make in terms of bettering the lots of people? Because, of course, labor is fighting for the public sector. But what happens to the general public? Mr. Layaku, can you hear me? Mr. Layaku, can you hear me? I think that you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Please, please unmute yourself so we can hear you. Mr. Layaku, can you hear me now? All right, let's move away. Um, unfortunately, we're having issues with uh, Dipo Layaku's audio there. Um, Francis, now that uh, Labour has given October 3rd, and we're hearing that we all have to stock our houses with all that we need while this strike action happens, because, again, um, all the affiliate unions are going to be joining this strike action, even though many are also skeptical that they've not necessarily heard from these affiliate unions, you know, voicing their support for um, this particular strike. Uh, but again, with the cost of leaving and the crisis that we're facing, how are many people going to survive? Because some people leave daily. Uh, many people might not have the bulk money to stock their homes with food. I mean, the average Nigerian right now is almost living from hand to mouth. Well, you know, the thing is, when we say uh, how will people survive, we should actually be asking, are people really surviving right now in Nigeria? You know, um, um, sadly, the answer is no. Um, you and I, you know, right now we know that uh, diesel is has, um, it's gone up to a thousand plus. Um, gas is following suit. Um, you know, petrol, well, we know the cost. How many people are putting their cars on the road? Um, I think I would say this, and that is why I blame the government, um, because you you don't you don't say subsidy is gone, knowing the fact that the lives of millions of Nigerians depend on you know that subsidy. Now you say subsidy is gone, and then you are talking about sharing palliatives as if we're in a concentration camp. You're sharing a bag of rice amongst 12, 10 people, and all of that. And then you know, so these are these these are things that are already affecting Nigerians. So Nigerians are not happy, Nigerians are not, um, they're not satisfied. Nigerians are not saying, government, we want you to give us validity. No, Nigerians are saying, create an opening environment for us to survive. That is all the Nigerian people are asking for. So if Labour is gonna go on strike to be able to, you know, knock some sense into government, then, you know, everyone should, you know, accept it and be ready for the outcome of it. Let's talk about the legality of this um, strike action. We know that um, bef before the previous, the, there was a strike action that Labour was um, supposed to embark on, but the federal government had also uh, taken a court order that had directed that Labour stay, um, you know, stay action. Um, will the, will Labour not be seen? Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Will Labour not be seen as violating a court order by proceeding on this um, strike action? Well, it is, um, it is the fundamental right of uh, labor and the fundamental right of Nigerians to go and strike. Uh, the government in going to court and trying to stop um, strike is just, um, you know, playing um, cat and mouse with labor. And in the real sense of it, you know, if you look at it, how many court judgments has, you know, the former government and this government obeyed? So it is not just for the people and for labor to obey court order. The government also must show goodwill in obeying court orders. So I, as far as I'm concerned, if there's going to be a court order, and then it means that the judge who, who's going to, the judge who's going to give the court, or in, who's going to give that judgment, is benefiting from, you know, what is going on in this country right now. Because I believe that any right-thinking Nigerian is going through a lot, would support an action that will make government to think as if there's no box. Hmm. Mr. Lai, I think that we've gotten your audio back now. We know that daily in the past few days, if not months, Nigerians have been subjected to the harsh economic realities uh, where the inflation rate is nearing about 30%, um, where a dollar is sold above 1,000 naira, where the per capita income has depreciated. I mean, the list is endless. Uh, many families, I hear, are withdrawing the awards from schools because they're unable to pay their school fees. Um, 
and this government keeps giving us promises. Many have also said that, oh, well, the, the president has just, has just been a hundred and something days in office. He cannot perform magic. Um, share your take with me on how bad things are and what, how soon we can get out of this. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, yes. How are you? Good, good, good evening. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Okay, yeah. to, to say that Nigerians are passing through a very tough time is an understatement. Things are very, very tough for Nigerians. All the palliative measures that the government said they have introduced since about uh, two months ago, I don't think we alleviate the suffering of people. For example, look at people going to the offices. Transportation, I mean the cost of transportation, it has gone up for more than by about 200%. Even those people that have their own cars to fuel the vehicle now, people have to do a lot of fashion. So things are already tough for Nigerians. And that's why a lot of people still believe that uh, so called uh, removal of subsidy as at that time was very, very premature. Because now the government is in a dilemma. Are we going to continue paying subsidy? Because they said they are going to subject the price of uh, fuel to factors, what they call uh, economic factors. Now, the, for example, you mentioned the case of dollars. It's about 1,000 naira. As at the time, petrol was put at 617,000 naira per, per, uh, per liter. Maybe dollar was about 750. So it's like the government got it wrong right from the very beginning. I, I, I sympathize with labor. Because except we want to deceive ourselves, every strike action by labor is always accompanied by more hardship for the people. This location, business will be dislocated, a lot of hardship. But it's like a labor is now torn between the devil and the blue sea. Do we go on this strike or shouldn't we? Yes, they have called the strike for people. I know that things will be more difficult for Nigeria. But I, but I think on the part of the government, government should do more. Maybe there's a need for them to review this, what they call the withdrawal of subsidy. I, I think there's a need because so, some of us believe that government needs to put certain things in place. If not, this price of fuel will continue to go up as long as the value of Naira continues to depreciate. So the problem now is does the government have the money to continue paying subsidy? I think what the government should do in the first time to establish whether there is that amount that should be paid for subsidy. Some of us believe that there is a lot of corruption that has been embedded into this so-called subsidy. First of all, we need to determine the number of barrels that we are using in a day as a country, not talking about the one we are exporting illegally. Then we need to, if possible, cut some of the costs that allow the cost of uh, landing costs and stuff like that. So that let us get the normal price of the fuel before we know what we are paying as subsidy. Because I am one of those people that believe that this subsidy payment is fraught with a lot of corruption. So there is a need for us to establish the number of the number of barriers we are using. There is a need for us to look at cost from when the crude oil is being shipped out of the country until it now comes back in form of a fine product. There is a need for us to get the normal cost. Because this, if we are able to get normal cost, we will discover that the cost of petroleum products, especially fuel, will not be as high as we are having it today. And then we'll be able to reduce the issue of this subsidy we think we are having. We reduce the area of corruption. That is the most important thing. Because the government cannot be paying seven trillion naira for to to make subsidy. It is not allowed. It is not feasible. What exactly is the correct subsidy we are paying that we should be paying? Then we cannot be talking about whether to withdraw it or not. I think that is the most important thing. But for strike action and the hardship is going to bring on the people, that one is not a secret. It is definitely going to bring it. But are the people not subjected to hardship already? Yeah. You see a lot of people working long distance because they don't have transport, they can't afford the cost of transportation. A lot of people that have cars now have these cars at home. Because they can't afford the cost of wealth. So the hardship is already there. We now look at do we continue with this hardship or we compound it or we look at the way. That's why it is the whole duty of the government in this wise to work on this in this project. 
not labor, not strike on anything. The government should try to put itself in the shoes of Nigerians. And that's the and that's Nigerians, not this idea of sending uh, we will rise that some of them are spoiled because some of the states they should not derive their spoil. Stop giving them one thousand, two thousand. This will not alleviate something. This one cannot even be palliative. Government needs to put themselves in the shoes of Nigerians. That is the question. Thank you. Okay. Let, let's talk about, since we're on the subsidy issue, Nigerians were made to believe that with the Dangote refinery, refinery coming on stream, um, it would ameliorate the sufferings uh, in terms of how much we pay for um, premium motor spirits. Um, also, we've heard that the NNPC has... Um, been sending our crude out of the country um, as payment for loans taken. And, and Dangote Refinery is having to import crude from outside of the country. And by next week, they're going to take, um, they're going to receive the very first tranche of that crude that they're importing into the country. Uh, does this not make a mess of this whole subsidy situation? Again, like I asked earlier on, is there really an end in sight for Nigerians? Are we going to have to wait another eight years to address this issue of subsidy or even, because again, Nigeria depends on this oil for its foreign, foreign exchange. And if the Naira to a dollar is a thousand Naira as at today, where is the hope? Mr. Laya, can you hear me? me? Yes, it was for you, sir. Yes, you know, it is still very, very unfortunate that uh, almost 50 years after Nigeria as a, as a country has been mounting the need of diversifying the economy. Uh, let us give credit to the last administration that tried to diversify the economy using agriculture, but unfortunately, the activities of bandits, kidnappers, and stuff are not helping matters, especially when farmers can, could not go to farm freely and uh, because of the fear of uh, kidnappers or bandits. So that is one aspect that we need to talk about. That is the area of, uh, in the area, in the area of uh, security. Now, there should be other means of, instead of uh, what we call, that was why the economy, so that we don't rely only on fuel. That is why we are having an issue with the issue of foreign exchange. And that is where, the, going to the advanced form, people are now calling off, how do we tap into AI, that's artificial intelligence which could of course be able to um, get out of for a, a means of uh, getting foreign estate. And again, let us ensure the let us take the example of the customs in case. Some people believe, and I think I have every reason to believe that too, that if we're able to look in the area of tax collection, that is blocking the loopholes, that it is possible for Nigeria to generate even more than what we are realizing of where from, uh, sorry, from uh, crude oil. That is another area. That is international trade. Of what, there is a need for us to look into the issue of corruption, which I think is bedeviling the first subsidy thing we are talking about. Let us focus on foreign trade. Let us look at what customs is generating. Because generating customs is another area through which we can generate foreign exchange. We also have NEMASA there. We have NPA there. So the problem is how do we tackle corruption? to make sure that what is expected to uh, go to the government actually gets there, instead of getting in, landing in the pockets of individuals that we are changing the system. So it is without uh, belaboring the point, I think what is very, very important is let us try to stop the issue of corruption. Because as long as we continue to depend solely on crude for our foreign exchange, the dollar, the value of the Naira will continue to depreciate against the Naira. Especially when our utility, or not, let's say our energy system has not been revamped, mm -hmm. so that it will match, we will have enough for productivity. That's another area. Because unfortunately for us, most of the things we are consuming, consuming are foreign goods. That means our productivity is very low. And where we have productivity, you have the quality that is very, very low. And unfortunately, you have the cost, even in some cases, being higher <laughs> than what comes in from outside. Mm. So, Except we have a government that is very, very serious to look into the eye of some people and say, no, this thing cannot continue, what we call business unusual. So these are the areas the government needs to take a look into. How okay. do we elevate our, our, our 
for tax collection because there are a lot of so many loopholes. Okay. Where what should have been accruing to the government ended up being accruing to the uh, pockets of individuals. We look at tax, we look at the uh, foreign trade, which is very, very key, especially when we are talking about foreign exchange. And like I said earlier, we look about the area of artificial intelligence. How do we tap into the resource, into the resources of services, services trading, so that we will not depend solely on good oil and when the price drops, Nigeria suffer. When the price goes up, Nigeria suffer. Because okay. we are not the one determining the fate of the country. That is one thing that we need to look into critically. Okay. Because and again, I want to start the, just like an advice to the Labour movement. Labour movement should think beyond just coming together as a Labour movement to agitate for better salary. Or let me say better work working for their living standard. They should also be looking at productivity. What are they bringing to the table? Okay, if the government is failing in this area, why can't labor say, okay, why don't you people do it this way? Mm. Our foreign alternatives. They shouldn't just see themselves as being militants every time. That oh, I am being elected as a president of an NLC. I am not saying that they've been a militant now. They shouldn't see the position of president of NLC or president of a 2UC as just being there to organize strike. Okay. I think it's to some extent we should try to minimize this idea of strike and stuff like that. All right. Let us even try to show government, why don't you do it this way? Okay. We'll, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll let, let, let me go back to Francis. Let me go back to Francis. Um, Francis, still talking about Mr. President and fighting corruption. This is a question that continuously is raised. If with the body language of Mr. President, and again, many people were waiting earnestly to see the people who would make Mr. President's list of members of the National Executive Council. Some would say that, a few, that there are a few impressive appointments on that list, but with the number of people and the caliber of people who make up Mr. President's cabinet, what is the guarantee that Mr. President can plug loopholes and fight corruption earnestly? Well, um, you know, when, it, when we talk about corruption in this country, um, it's something that sometimes I ask myself, maybe we should stop using um, the Bible or using the Quran for people to sway um, when they want to become minister or whatever. Maybe we should start using uh, deities for people to swear with it. I think that is where we should start from. Uh, the Bible and the Quran has not helped us because the same people who swear with the Bible and the Quran are the same people who have um, continued to embezzle and continue to sleep with corruption. Um, you, 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 you talked about NNPC, and um, you also talked about Dangote Refinery. I don't, I don't understand. Is it, not, uh, is it not sad? Is it not shameful? But, you know, we're talking about uh, a private sector refinery where we have four refineries owned by government, owned by the Nigerian people, that they have failed to fix. And then NNPC, as we know, has become uh, a private company. So I do not understand why it is still in charge of the crude. It's still the one that decides and is still the one taking out crudes to sell. This is part of the corruption we're talking about. You do not allow a private entity to become so powerful as it and begins to run parallel as a, as a public entity. We need to know if NNPC is owned by individuals. Who are these individuals? What is the stake of the Nigerian state in, in the current NNPC? So this corruption we're talking about starts from there. We also had Mr. President, when he was talking about um, subsidies gone, he talked about the fact that some people have been benefiting from the subsidy. Who are these people? Are they so secret? Are they so powerful? Are they highly placed and nobody can call them out? We need to know who and who is benefiting from this subsidy, who and who has benefited in the past from this subsidy, mm -hmm. and they brought to book. Maybe that is where the government will start fighting corruption. But if you're doing all this and you're not looking at the, the core problem, the, the core issues that has led to this state, then you cannot find a, a solution. You do not cure cancer by cutting it off. You cure cancer by going to the root to remove pain. And this is what this government is not doing. Okay. Finally, uh, gentlemen, before I let you both go, um, with what we have on the ground, because we, there seems to be a lot that um, as attributed to Mr. President's travels and um, his recent visit to India, um, the UN General Assembly, trade relations being boosted, etc., etc. Um, 
how soon do we see Nigeria coming out of this rot? Many would attribute the situation that we're facing economically to the previous administration and all of the um, terrible policies that have been made. But then um, the National Union of Local Government Employees, Nolge, recently have blamed President Tinubu uh, and his policies um, for hurting the average Nigerian. Um, what are your thoughts on this in closing? I'll start with you, with you Mr. Layoko, and then, of course, Francis will wrap it up. In one minute. So I'm saying that many people have blamed former President Buhari for the situation of things, how bad the economy is, and that it was inherited by President Tinubu. Although the uh, Nolge is, is blaming President Tinubu um, for the harsh, um, you know, political or uh, rather economic policies that he has. Um, which is causing Nigeria this problem. And I'm saying, do you see an end in sight? Well, that they inherited the bad economy. Because uh, he told us in one of his uh, speeches that, uh, you know, in one of his statements, said that, that um, he asked for the job, not that we went to his house to go and beg him. So I, I don't think that he inherited the bad economy should not be an excuse because interestingly and uh, fortunately for him, uh, he, he, inherited, he inherited the government from the same APC. And I think uh, the government should have been pursuing the manifestos of the party. So I, I, I think what it just means is that uh, people should realize that uh, being the president of Nigeria is not just a party party. It is a call to service. It mm. is a call to serious business. And uh, you know, the elections were held on the 25th of February. By 28th through March 1st, results have been announced. The winner has been declared. So I, I think the president has enough time, enough room to study the situation okay. and then come up with uh, the solution to some of the problems that, are, that he inherited, so, supposedly. So okay. I, I, I think uh, it's just a matter of uh, gathering his loins, like they always say, and then uh, <laughs> okay. getting the best hands to work with him because uh, Nigerians will not want to listen to excuses. Okay. I, unfortunately, if I may give you my, my own opinion, uh, I think he, he seems to have failed from the very beginning because uh, if Nigerians were buying fuel around the May at 195 and they were groaning. Mr. Laiko, I think we've lost that connection with you. Francis, so can, 17, okay. uh, Nigerians are definitely going through a lot. So. What the president needs to do is to redouble his efforts. If he okay. needs to understand, if he has been working 21 hours in a day, maybe he needs to start working 24 hours in a day. Okay. Or if he cannot do that, let him get I can do it for him. Because Nigerians don't want to listen to excuses. You okay. measure the success we, of we the have, We have to go, Mr. Layaku. I, I gave you just one minute to, to give me your quick analysis. So I'm going to let um, Francis just wrap up because we have to go now. Francis. Let's see well, if we can raise the clock. You, you know, when, when, when a child fails some exam, you have an opportunity to redo the exam. Uh, the president has, from day one, has failed. He needs to go back to the drawing board. He needs to understand that, uh, like you said, um, unfortunately, he has kept saying that he's going to continue from where the last administration stopped. And, you know, I find it rather very, very uh, unbelievable that neither Mr. President or his deputy has come up openly to say that you know the last administration did wrong. They need to we need to admit those wrongs in order to move forward. So Mr. President needs to go back to the drawing board. A lot has gone wrong. A lot of his policies are not working, and he needs to understand that Nigeria is not Lagos State. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Digwa Olayoku is the spokesperson for the New Nigeria People's Party. And Francis Chilaka is a political analyst and a social commentator. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Good night. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we return, let's talk about the fact that Nigeria is on the sixth position uh, in the World Index for organized crime. Stay with us.